Now, John le Carré famously once called James Bond the ultimate prostitute, and Ian Fleming's original novels were full of gratuitous luxury brand names as a kind of pornography for readers in post-war austerity Britain. But the production company that makes the films... um, says that such sponsorship can cover the entire production cost through sponsorship and product placement deals. You've probably already seen the adverts for computers and a certain brand of beer ahead of the new Bond outing spectrum. Daryl Collis works for Seesaw Media and does product placement in films for a living, including Skyfall and Spectre. So we thought we'd get an insight into the maths of marketing ahead of the new film's opening next week. So, so Daryl and Spectre, how is Spectre using product placements and tie-ins and how much of a difference do they make? Well, they make a, it works both ways. It makes a, a very big difference in terms of how a brand ties in with the film and also how the film benefits from the brand association. Because uh, as a brand, they benefit from it tying in with such a big global property and they can promote themselves on the back of something like James Bond and vice versa. Um, and we're talking about obvious things like the car, you know, the drink that he drinks, the watch. I mean, is it is it specific stuff that, you know, who's bidding highest for this? How do they do those deals? Well, there are certain categories that Bond has to have associated with as you rightly said there's cars there's watches there's the electronics and there's also the clothing he wears and the drinks whether it's champagne or whether it's the beer or maybe it's a martini as you say that, that's coming up in the new in new spectre so the deals are done literally as the script is written there's also existing partners who've been with working with eon and the broccoli family as the producers for many years so bollinger has been the champagne of choice for james bond now for since the 70s 80s um the omega watch he wears that's been a partnership there for the last 10 15 and what years. sort of amounts are we talking about like you know what would be the bidding to to do the watch or the, the phone well, well there well the phone is because it's a sony phone and sony the distributors that's kind of a, a given in terms of there is no so thing as bidding it's just what fits right for the brand and what the association is and also what the marketing spend is because that's what the that's what the production company is more interested in is the marketing spend than the actual hard cash dollars to, to pay for it when you worked on skyfall i mean there was a barber jacket in that what difference did it make that he was wearing a barber jacket well that that appeared in the very last section of the film and that had a major effect on barber sales. So that jacket, not only did it sell out online, but it was going on eBay for five times the retail price. And so when Barber reissued the jacket, they cut it exactly as James Bond wore it and it had a massive effect on sales. I wonder if it can ever backfire. We've got a clip here from a film that a lot of people remember. Um, it's from Casino Royale. My six looks for maladjusted young men. I give little thought to sacrificing others in order to protect queen and country. You know, former SAS types with easy smiles and expensive watches... Rolex. Amiga. Beautiful. Oh, everyone cringed at that. Eva Green as Vespa Lynn there and Daniel Craig as Bond. Now, that Casino Royal moment seems like it's crossed a line, but is there a line? Yes, there definitely is a line, because if if, if, if you and everyone else jars at, the, at her mentioning beautiful after the word of Omega, then people are going to start thinking badly about the brand and thinking it's a bit, it's a bit something smells here, something's gone a bit off. And um, briefly, is it unique to Bond or can any other film franchises or films pull this off? No, well, I mean, this year, the one, probably the biggest, highest grossing film at the box office is Jurassic Park. And that had phenomenal product placement throughout it, from, from cars to, to electronics all the way through it. But a lot of people thought that was a bit too much because that got noticed a lot. But a lot of brands and a lot of films tie in together. Do you think people care anymore whether James Bond drives an Aston Martin or something else? Yes, I do. I think I think a lot of people, especially men 18 to 35, who look at James Bond as, a, as an idol, as a hero, look to see what he's wearing what he's driving, what he's drinking, and that has a you know big effect. So the white tuxedo we see on the posters, I'm sure you'll see that a lot more people in uh, black tie events will be wearing white tuxedos. And it doesn't matter that he's not even in the advert for that that computer. It's just got her in it, money penny in it. It's it's the association with James Bond, and and, and she's enough. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Daryl Collis. And Daniel Craig is John Wilson's guest this Thursday. He'll probably be holding a front row logoed coffee mug, reminding you that you can download any of our interviews from the Radio iPlayer app.